Let's talk about frontal plane movements, joint by joint by joint. Let's start right here with my neck or my head, okay? Lateral flexion from side to side. So again, thinking about that plane and axis relationship, I want you to think about an axis or a rod running straight through my neck right here from anterior to posterior. And then as I rotate about that fixed axis from side to side, that's my frontal planar movement about an anterior to posterior fixed axis. So if I'm using my little piece of chalk here, it would be running through just like that. And then I'm gonna rotate about that axis from side to side, okay? Again, that relationship between the plane and the axis is a perpendicular one. So frontal plane, and then I've got my little axis here running straight through my hand from anterior to posterior. All frontal plane movements are gonna have that anterior to posterior axis. So let's now go through the body. Let's take it down my spine a little bit further and you can see I've still got lateral flexion there from side to side. My shoulders, I've got AB and AD, so abduction, adduction. AB, I'm taking away from the midline. AD, I'm bringing it back towards my midline. I'm adding to the midline. Now, I hope your elbow cannot do any A, B, A, D. <laughs> that would not be good. Your wrist, though, can. So that would be A, B, that would be A, D. We also call that radial um, and ulnar deviation, named based on those bones that you have in your forearm right here. You can hear my little monkeys talking to me. So my ulna is gonna run on my pinky side, my radius is gonna run on my um, thumb side. And if I deviate towards my midline, also towards the side of the ulna, that's ulnar deviation or adduction. If I go to the radius and away from my midline, that's gonna be radial deviation. Again, it's very important to start from anatomical position, okay? If I have pronation or supination happening away from anatomical position, then you're gonna get all mixed up as to which is abduction and which is adduction. And yes, I'm saying AB and AD, because those two letters, the B and the D, they sound very close. So we wanna make sure we're distinguishing um, adequately between those two. So let's look a little bit lower. We've got hip ABAD. Thank you. Had to save a little monkey here. It was trying to get, hi, he's trying to get out of his eye chair. <laughs> All right. That's part of teaching at home, right? I'm going to come up a little bit. We got hip A, B, A, D. And then I want you to see on my foot, that would be A, B, and A, D. We also call that inversion and eversion. Inversion, think about seeing the inside of your foot. Eversion, we're going outside. That doesn't actually occur at the angle, that occurs at the subtalar joint. So think sub meaning underneath or below. So you have your tibia and your fibula, fibula, they come down, and then you have all those tarsal bones that they sit on top of. Underneath the talus, that top tarsal, think talus on top, TT. Underneath that, those other tarsals, they can swing like a pendulum. That's making it sound like your foot can do all kinds of crazy stuff laterally and medially. There's not a whole lot of movement there, but you do have that relationship, medial to lateral, inversion and eversion, and those would be considered frontal planar movements. You can also A, B, and A, D your fingers and your toes, okay? Um, and that's pretty much the gist of all those frontal planar movements.